emotional and mental well-being support from the community and the voluntary sector, help with social needs, including finance, welfare, etc., and services for children and families, as well as pre-bookable appointments to meet urgent care needs. So therefore, we're wanting something that is really very effective um, within the community settings, and that will ensure that the urgent treatment centre will be as effective as it can be. We must also consider the availability of the clinical workforce in rural when developing detailed propo proposals for extended GP access, urgent, urgent treatment centres and other pre-bookable and walking facilities, whether for all ages or children and young people. Urgent care in primary and community settings requires a high degree of skill and an appropriate <coughs> level of risk of management. It needs sufficient numbers of skilled and motivated staff able to care for people in the most appropriate setting, and that, that's been a feature of the conversations this evening. We have an opportunity to build an urgent care model that helps us attract, develop, and retain clinical staff in rewarding roles. And this is something that I've been talking to my staff about, the opportunities that this uh, proposal could afford. Therefore, we are fully committed to providing care in and close to people's homes that support people's independence and quality of life, whilst ensuring rural people get emergency care as quickly as possible when they need it. We're already working with partners across the system, including the general practice, the hospital and rural CTG to achieve this, and we are ready to support with more detailed design work uh, as the system, uh, within the system, to work effectively for the people of Wirral. <coughs> Thank you, Paul. Do we have any questions? Oh, gosh. Sorry, we've got away with it. Councillor Hillcrest, please. I've got to read too much into the choice of the word undefined. In your statement, you say, as some elements of the proposal are as yet undefined, easy to propose to offer for children and young people, it is not possible to state precise effects of the review. Mm -hmm. What have you heard tonight that might provide some additional information to form an opinion as to whether undefined is becoming better defined or are there still problems that we need to examine? Um, so I think it's, it's how we bring together the elements of the discussion tonight but also the other aspects of the consultation so that we can then work together to decide what those um, services will look like in the community. Um, we know that um, the consultation at the moment is talking about um, children's services in the community and also um, pregnant <coughs> clinics. Um, but actually, if we really get our ideas and our thoughts together in a much more rounded, coherent way, we could be providing much more um, opportunities for people that have long-term conditions to be managed much, more, much better in the community. And we could make really strong health and well-being hubs that actually have a range of um, options for people, not only from a clinical perspective, but also from information and advice as well. So I think we've got a big, a big opportunity to do things in a very different way. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, um, both non-emergency and emergency patients. Um, 
not just in terms of volumes, but in levels of acuity for the emergency patients as well. Uh, the organisation at this point in time is seeing about 275 attendances a day at the, at the A &E department. Uh, and I stress absolutely emergency, that's what uh, it's above the door, and that's the definition of, of what service we're trying to provide. And about 100 of those patients arrived by ambulances, blue light to you. Um, so the conversations that we've heard tonight are about 40%, it's, it's not the ambulance patients, it's, it's the proportion of those patients that don't arrive by ambulance. Those patients that self-present, um, and that's where the 40% figure um, is determined from. Now for us as an organisation um, running a, an accident and emergency department, these are medics that are trained in that particular field. Um, and the challenge for us is trying to manage not only the acuity and the uh, importance of those emergency patients, but providing genuine access for patients that are presenting with other needs. And we talk long and hard about the measure of urgent care, whether that be the four hour standard. Um, and actually, in terms of the four hour standard, uh, we've been able to say that that's a poor patient's experience. Um, on the other hand, our patients tell us that um, it's a good patient's experience in the fact that it's there. 24 7 it's there and they use it because they struggle to get access to other services at certain times and therefore um, they will take any need. The benefits that we only see on the Arrow Park site is that there's a co-located walking centre um, that predominantly deals with minor cases, primary care cases, it doesn't necessarily deal with minor injuries nor indeed just deal with any of the intermediate case mix. Um, that would sit somewhere between what we'd expect any consultant to have trained to treat. Um, and therefore, the only treatment centre proposal is, is, is there as a solution to try and bridge that gap and offer um, a portfolio of services that would meet the need of any type of patient, um, whether it be primary care, pharmacy, or any other um, uh, medical profession. For us, um, that would see the patients being seen uh, by the most appropriate clinician depending on their clinical need. Um,